Alright, so what is Linux? Linux is a free open source operating system. An operating system is a piece of software you would install on your computer to interact with hardware. Since Linux is open source, it has been known for its security since everyone can look at the source code that's put into it. Now source code is code that programmers would type for the programs that you use. Another reason Linux has been known to be more secure is it's less targeted by people who make malware, such as viruses, keyloggers, spammers, adware, etc, etc. Now I won't divulge too much into malware since this is about Linux, but Linux is targeted a lot less than Windows because Windows has a much larger audience than Linux. Alright, so you might be asking yourself, where can I download Linux from? Well, you can download Linux from the distributions website. Now, there are hundreds upon hundreds of distributions out there, so we'll probably only name about three in this video. And I'll also put links to those distribution websites in the description so you guys can check it out and download it yourself. If you're really feeling adventurous, you can go for maybe downloading every single source file yourself and compiling, but that's very time consuming and not for the faint of heart who don't know much about Linux. So now, I'll describe some distributions I've tried or know of that I think you guys might be interested in. The one I use and personally really love is Gentoo, and that's because you can pretty much configure everything how you want. You get the choice from the kernel you use to what compiler you use to even what architecture you use on your system. Now keep in mind, if you use the wrong architecture, your computer probably won't work too well but you still get the choice to screw up your computer. Now you also get the choice when you c install a package of what compile flags you use which in Gen 2 they're called use flags and you pretty much can read the use flag and then know what to use in a source file if you actually have to compile from hand. There's also a lot of documentation regarding Gen 2 and installing packages or troubleshooting. They also have a very very helpful IRC whenever you need help if there's people in there who can help you. Another distribution you could try besides from Gentoo is Ubuntu. That's pretty much, in my own opinion, like Windows of Linux. It's very easy to install, it's binary just like Windows, and you pretty much keep what you get and you have to do a full reinstall whenever you want to upgrade from what I've seen. Now I could be wrong in a whole you have to reinstall after there's an upgrade, because I don't use it that often and I did not use it that long when I had it installed. So if I'm wrong, someone just email me. My email will be in the description of this video as well. Now there is another distribution-like thing. It's Linux from scratch. That's compiling everything from source. You also have to download everything and configure it when you actually have it on your system, which can be a pain in the ass if you actually want to see what you can put on there. But in the end, it could be very much worth it, but not for the novice to Linux. Is that how you pronounce it? And there's also another flavor of Unix, which is kind of like what Linux is. Well, it is what Linux is. FreeBSD and BSD. I don't know that many people who use it, and from what it sounds like, it's kind of like Gentoo. You compile everything from source. I don't even know if they have a package manager, so if anyone wants to let me know that so I don't have to search it myself, feel free to. But I don't know much about it to really give an opinion. But you could give it a go if you wanted to. Don't know much about it, though, so I can't help you out. But enough talk about what distributions there are, those are about four or three or however many I discussed. I'll put all the links in the description of the video. But to install Linux, you either need to burn a live CD, which is pretty much a CD you put into your computer, you boot up the Linux distribution, and oftentimes then enough, you can actually test out the distribution before you install it and get a nice feel of what it's like. Sometimes you'll be able to see what the whole thing will actually look like if it's that kind of distribution. But oftentimes enough, I know with Gentoo and Ubuntu, the live CD doesn't reflect what you might have when you install unless Ubuntu changed in the last three years. But with Gentoo, the live CD is definitely not something to measure what Gentoo is like. With Gentoo, you can pretty much choose how you want to look, what you want to use, all that stuff I've already gone over. Now, you can also make a live USB, which is pretty much the same thing as a live CD. You can boot up your computer into the USB and do the whole thing as a live CD, but not all computers can boot up from a USB. Though I've noticed with the most newer ones, they can boot up from USB, and even some of my older computers I've used or have lying around can boot up from USB. So once you actually boot up your system from USB or CD or DVD or whatever medium you use, you can try out the distribution without even having to have it touch your hard disk, which is great because it's pretty much like a trial. 
so if you like it, you can install it. Or if you just want to keep using live CD, live USB, live DVD, whatever the hell you use, you can keep doing that. But if you wish to keep your theme, files, configurations, etc., it's recommended that you really install unless the live CD actually has the ability to save all that onto some form of medium that you can recall and then keep all your configurations. Now once you have a distribution installed, or just keep looking through live CDs, you should try and look at desktop environments. There's quite a few out there actually, but there's mainly three I use, or have used, or know of. Those three are KDE, GNOME, and Fluxbox. Fluxbox is pretty much a minimalistic desktop environment. You configure your menu, you write everything yourself. GNOME is somewhat minimalistic, it has a lot of themes. Some people like it more than KDE, and KDE is sort of like Windows, it's just got one bar at the bottom, or top, or side, or wherever you put it, and it's got a menu similar to Windows, and if you use the newest KDE, it's also similar to Vista Windows 7 search menu thing they have. I'm not a big fan of it, so don't ask me much about it. I use GNOME primarily, I also like Fluxbox because you can configure that a lot but typically I use GNOME. Now, to choose your desktop environment, you just think of what you need. GNOME is somewhat minimalistic, and then Fluxbox is mainly minimalistic, and KDE kind of is like Windows. It's eye candy. But it's also easier to use. Its menus are pretty much as easy to use as Windows. GNOME's in between there. It's easy to use, but it's also it can feel a bit weird to use because there's usually two bars unless you configure it just for one bar then you can make it look like Windows but I use two bars and most people I see who use it also use two bars and then Fluxbox is extremely minimalistic there's nothing that's pretty much done for you and if it is it's not very eye candy like and pretty much it's a minimalistic desktop environment if you like minimalism that's fine now if you still don't understand what a desktop environment is when you're in Windows, you're using a desktop environment that I would call Explorer. Explorer basically is the start menu you have there, it's the little bar at the bottom. When you open up a new window, say My Documents, you're also using Explorer. Now when you're using a Linux desktop environment, it's not exactly called KDE, there's several other ones in between, like they have their own window manager which you can choose if you want. There's GNOMES. And then there's flux boxes which you actually do have to choose. Now I've seen you be going on about the desktop environment, so I'll just segue into the package managers. There's binary and then there's source. Now there's some advantages and disadvantages of each and every one. If you use a source package manager, generally you're going to have the choice of everything that gets compiled into it, which will allow you to have a lot of choice when installing a package. Now when you're using a binary installer, there's the big advantage of it's fast compared to source. A disadvantage of source is obviously it can take a lot longer than binary and sometimes it can fail which really sucks when you want to install something. Now a disadvantage of binary which if there's any cases out there of this happening someone email me. It. But if you're using a binary package manager someone could easily probably break into the package manager's tree or wherever the files are stored and replace that with a virus. And most users wouldn't know it. They wouldn't check it. They wouldn't care. But with source, you can download it from anywhere. There's several sources where you download it from, and they all work fine. You can look at it yourself, patch it yourself. My opinion on binary package manager is pretty biased because I do have a fear someone could take over the repository tree and replace it with a virus or a botnet or some other malware that I won't go into. Now, just for a refresher, Gentoo's is a source-based package manager called Portage. Ubuntu's package manager is based off of Debian's package manager, which is binary, and I have no clue what it's called. I think it's called dpackage or something like that. Don't know. But I'm coming up on a 10-minute limit, and this is quite long. If you guys have any questions whatsoever about anything I've discussed, feel free to email me ask on my form which I will post the link to the website it requires registration you don't need to actually enter a legitimate email address moment of recording this I can't recall if you even have to put an email address in you can also leave a comment below and I'll get back to you on that I'm willing to make video requests for anything Linux related or anything related to what I just talked about 
if no requests are made anytime soon, I will probably just make a video about installing Gentoo and it'll be quite long. So feel free to request.